Armando Caballero was seen leaving his silver Ford Fusion with a dark colored bag wearing blue rubber gloves. Gloves. He has gloves. He has gloves. He has gloves. Don't be me. That's the video of Armando Caballero after he allegedly killed Mia Marcano. Let's get into the story. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Mia had relocated from Foot Lauderdale to Orlando, Florida in order to pursue sports medicine at Valencia College. Mia was exceptionally gifted. Modeling, cheerleading, dancing, and horseback riding were her passions. She was a diva who always knew the appropriate thing to say, the most fashionable attire to wear, and the latest online trends. When Mia was six years old, her parents split, but she stayed close to both of them, as well as her siblings and extended relatives. Mia pursued a sports medicine degree. She enrolled in a community college in Orlando, Florida, determined to achieve her goals, until it finally collapsed. On September 24, 2021, Mia communicated with her mother, Wimei, and her cousin, Siley. Mia frequently texted, sent snapchats and utilized tiktok mia informed her mother that she was tiktok famous after posting a dancing video that earned more than 1000 likes and comments mia was required to work that evening in the apartment complex's management office typically she worked until approximately 5 pm mia was delighted since she was traveling to her father's home in foot lauderdale that evening mia and siley were looking forward to spending the weekend together at 5 p.m., Mia left work. She informed her pal through text message that she was leaving work and preparing to travel to the airport. At 5.06 p.m., Mia's buddy texted her, but she never responded or opened Siley's Snapchat. Mia's family realized something was awry by 6.45 p.m. Mia's brother, Marlon Jr., had also attempted to contact her. After 5 p.m., Mia's family went out to her school classmates, but no one had heard from her. Mia's relatives reported her as missing to the Orlando Police Department. The cops arrived at Mia's flat on the first floor at 10.02 p.m. They knocked on her door, but received no response. A deputy walked around the back of the house and entered Mia's bedroom. Nothing appeared odd or out of place. Mia's relatives reached out to her roommate at 10.21 p.m. The roommate granted access to the cops. Mia's bedroom door was locked, something her roommate claimed she had done previously. The police and roommate returned to the exterior, and the roommate scaled the window to allow the cops into Mia's bedroom. The officers discovered a little dresser blocking the bedroom entrance. A broken necklace and a rusty box cutter were discovered on the floor. Mia was constantly observed wearing the necklace, and no one in the flat claimed ownership of the box cutter. The cops discovered dried blood on Mia's pillowcase, as well as her stuffed animal in her wardrobe. At 1.36 a.m. on September 25, 2021, Mia was reported missing. Around 4 a.m., Mia's family landed in Orlando. A police officer escorted Mia's family into her flat so they could look around. Siley instantly observed that Mia's room was disorderly, which was unlike of her. Mia's father had installed security locks on her bedroom windows, but he realized that they had been removed. Siley was gazing out the window when she observed a silver automobile driving in circles around the parking lot. The driver, upon seeing Siley, sought to leave. As they were pulling off, they struck a parked car and nearly struck a family member of Mia called Simone. A conflict occurred between the guy and members of Mia's family about 5 a.m. No one knows Tati. That's my whole thing. Not Tati even the roommate knows Tati. Here, yeah. She's an employee, but you keep saying Tati is a friend and that you all hung out together. As of right now, you have you sent obsessive you tomorrow, texts Tati. to Mia. We have all seen the texts. You talked about giving her your life savings. You cash out her money and you claim that you weren't in touch. It's her on text. Savings. I never As said a matter of fact, we're going to get a police report to pull your phone records if that's the case. They accused him of sending Mia hostile text messages. The man introduced himself as Armando Caballero, an apartment maintenance worker. Armando said, are you searching for Mia? They questioned how he knew this. Armando stated that Tati, a mutual acquaintance, informed them that Mia was missing. Mia disclosed everything to her family, but no one had heard of Tati. 
However, they were aware that Mia had been harassed by a maintenance worker. Sili also observed Armando's swelling face and hand. He was quite protective and upset, and they suspected that he was likely involved. Mia's family was out putting up missing people signs after a long night. In addition, they decided to visit Armando's flat and conduct their own surveillance on him. Armando Caballero was seen leaving his silver Ford Fusion with a dark colored bag wearing blue rubber gloves. Gloves. He has gloves, he has gloves he has in gloves. his hands. Don't beat me up. Nobody was beating you up. I'm guilty, well, you, you put yourself here? in the middle right here. You brought yourself over here. Because we're concerned. You're concerned. Orange County Sheriff's detectives Why identified Caballero, a maintenance worker, at the Arden Villas Apartments complex as Mia's killer. Witnesses say Caballero was obsessed with Mia. There were texts from him that family and friends called obsessive. And Caballero... Even though it came off as if the police wasn't doing their jobs properly, they claimed they lacked sufficient evidence to arrest Amando at that point in time. The family decided to take matters in their own hands to search for their loved one since the police were not doing enough. Washington says family members were forced to do their own digging because deputies didn't act fast enough when Mia went missing. They just had that parent instinct, that intuition that this guy had something to do with it. Until we figure out what's going on, just don't be Mia. The family pointing to this video. It shows a deputy speaking with Armando Caballero, who would later become the prime suspect early Saturday morning. Mia was last seen at around 5 p.m. Friday night. In the video, Mia's relatives tell the deputy that Caballero was obsessed with Mia, but the deputy lets him go. At the time the video was taken, there was no basis uh, for our deputies to detain or arrest Armando Caballero. Our deputies are not permitted to arrest or detain someone based on a hunch or based on what someone else is saying. Mia's family also questioning the sheriff's office initial response to her disappearance. They claimed the crime scene was not secure and a deputy commented that Mia's case was not a high priority. All those parts about you know the security of a possible crime scene, that's all the stuff that, that we're looking into. At the meantime, a search of the key fab system in Mia's apartment had been conducted. Armando entered Mia's apartment at 4.36 p.m. on September 24 using his master key. Then, he awaited Mia's homecoming, which occurred at 5 p.m. And Orange County detectives determined the suspect used his on-call manager key to get into Mia's apartment about 30 minutes before she came home the day she disappeared. There was no work order request made to get into her apartment. Down for you. Here's a look at some of the major events on September 24th. That's the day Mia Marcano went missing. At 2.14 p.m., the deadbolt was first opened by the key fob known to be in Armando Caballero's possession. He was the apartment complex maintenance worker and the only suspect in Mia's murder. Her fob opened the door a few hours later, around the time she was last seen. Caballero's phone pinged near Timberscan Apartments around 8.20 that night. A deputy was dispatched to Mia's apartment at 9.42 p.m. after a well-being check was requested by Mia's mom. The family says when deputies went in, a dresser was in front of the door and the window had been tampered with. The next day, Mia was listed as a missing person. A deputy met with the family just before 5 a.m. Four hours later, her family looked through Caballero's apartment with his permission. With this information in hand, the police decided to expand their search. The went from dot counties to counties. There were a lot of volunteers, people from all over trying to find where Mia could be. There had been over 30 search all in all that the FBI at a point in time got involved to increase the odd of finding Mia. There was even several vigils held hoping that would allow Mia to come back. Hundreds of people showing up at the vigil but Mia never showed up. On September 27, 2021, maintenance personnel attempted to gain access to a storage facility. This establishment was where Armando had previously worked. When the police were able to enter the apartment, they discovered Armando dead. He had self-hung himself. Armando died, taking his secrets with him. The cops could scan his GPS coordinates from the day Mia vanished. The coordinates provided by Armando led the police approximately 17 miles away from Mia's apartment complex. It was a derelict region amid abandoned structures. Mia's body, which was now almost total skeleton, 
was recovered in the undergrowth near these structures on October 2, 2021. She wore trousers, a bra, and a bathrobe. It was evident that she had been preparing for the airport. Mia's handbag was discovered nearby. Black duct tape was used to bind her lips, wrists, and ankles. A body we believe to be that of Mia Marcano. About an hour ago, detectives notified Mia's parents of our tragic news. Our hearts are broken. I told you Thursday that hundreds of Orange County Sheriff's Office personnel were committed to this case and working uh, very hard. Uh, everyone wanted this outcome to be different. So why were we at Timber Scan Apartments? So uh, cell phone records uh, showed us that Caballero was in or near the Timber Scan Apartments on Friday evening between eight and nine o'clock. Uh, that's the evening that she was reported missing. And he was there for about 20 minutes. Uh, nothing in the records indicate that he ever returned there prior to killing himself. Evidence of the investigation into Mia Marcano's disappearance, including what could be the last known picture of the college student alive. Detectives determined the South Florida native was kidnapped and killed by a maintenance worker at her Orlando apartment complex. Local 10 crime specialist Bridget Matter is live now with it. It'll play in my mind over and over throughout every day so many memories. Her father, Marlon Marcano, fighting tears in a sit-down interview with Local 10, reflecting on his daughter's life and how it tragically ended. My mind is just left to wonder. Like I say, I, I go through the motions day by day. In conclusion of the investigation, the Orange County Sheriff's Office believes Caballero acted alone in the kidnapping and murder of Mia Marcano. Since Caballero died by suicide, the case is closed and there are no further prosecutions pending. Family and friends gathered for Mia's funeral. A royal October blue casket with a crown on top, fitting for a young woman who had an unforgettable light. Baby girl, princess, uncle loves you. And I know you hear me. And I know one day I'll get to hear you say it back to me too. Since Mia's death, Many questions have been raised about safety and security even behind locked doors. They're concerned for themselves and others across the state, realizing a locked door means nothing when a complete stranger can come in with a master key. Governor Ron DeSantis has signed Mia's law, which the Florida Senate unanimously approved the bill that aims to improve tenant safety in apartment buildings in March 2022.